Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank God it's Friday and welcome to another Bible study. I hope you all are doing well and you've been following the Bible study. So today we'll be studying Isaiah chapter 31 and chapter 32. And we can see that God is still emphasizing on the danger of trusting in a physical force or a physical power because he's still criticizing the acts of the people of Jerusalem and Judah depending on the Egypt to protect them. Now let's read what the Lord has to say in this chapter. Those who go to Egypt for help are doomed. They are relying on Egypt's vast military strength, horses, chariots, and soldiers, but they do not rely on the Lord, the Holy God of Israel, or ask him for help. He knows what he is doing. He sends disaster. He carries out his threats to punish evil men and those who protect them. The Egyptians are not gods. They are only humans. Their horses are not supernatural. When the Lord acts, the strong nation will crumble, and the weak nation, its helped, will fall. Both of them would be destroyed. <laughs> so here we see that God is strongly criticizing that habit of relying on man. Because, I mean, these people are mere human beings. They don't have any supernatural power. If a greater force comes, it will destroy them as well as destroying you that is running to them for help. So here we see that God is criticizing it. And he's stating clearly that he will send disaster both to Egypt and to the weak nations who believe so much in the power of the Egyptians. Now, what is even so powerful about the Egyptians? Because they have chariots, they have horses, they have soldiers. Is there anything supernatural? They are not gods. Now, the Lord is pointing out something in specific that you people do not even rely on me for help you don't even call on me for help you don't call on me for help and this brings to mind the fact that sometimes in our lives where we might be faced with having to make a major decision or we might be faced with a major problem and the first thing that comes to our mind is you're like we are all guilty about this yes I am guilty also. And the first thing that will come to our mind is, please, who am I going to call? Is it my husband? Is it my father? Is it my friend? Is it my boss? Like the least person, the least thing that will be on our mind is even asking God, God, what would you have me do in this situation? Should I say yes or should I say no? What decision would you want me to take? Like, we are so guilty of this and it comes naturally to us human because we feel like we like to depend and to trust on what we see. You know, we cannot see God. So it, it takes a great level of faith and trust to be able to rely on God and prioritize him in all our day-to-day -day endeavors, in our decision makings, in our actions, in any problem we have. So it takes a very high level of faith and trust because being that we are humans, we are prone to trust more in our fellow humans because after all it's better i trust the person i can see you at least i can see the person i know what the person has done before and something but yeah god is calling that all shades of wrong that we should rather than relying on our fellow humans we should rely on god we should always call on him to help us at all times the lord goes on to give us a strong reassurance he goes on to give his people a strong reassurance and we see that in verse 4 i read further the lord said to me no matter how shepherds yell and shout they can't scare away a lion from an animal that it has killed. In the same way, there is nothing that can keep me, the Lord Almighty, from protecting Mount Zion. Like, this is a very, very strong promise. This is a very, very strong reassurance that nothing can prevent God from protecting us, from, you know, staying with us. Nothing is with us. Is our Almighty God. is our ever-reliable Father. Now, this is a very great reassurance from God. Just as a bird overs over its nest to protect its young ones, so I, the Lord Almighty, will protect Jerusalem and defend it. Now, can you see God is giving, like, a very strong reassurance to the people of Jerusalem that nothing can make me to not protect and defend people you are my children you are my own you are my own you just need to rely on me rely on me trust in me and know that i can protect you and i am assuring you this day that nothing nothing can separate me from you that is very very powerful the lord goes on to also remind them that he knows that they have sinned he knows that they have gone astray from his path but he's ready to receive them back if only they come back to him you know the lord has been calling these people has been calling me that's been calling the people of jerusalem and judah Come back to me. Stop sinning. I love you so much and I want to take care of you. I can protect you. I can provide for you. I'll be your faithful father, but just stop sinning. And it's as if the people of Jerusalem and Judah, they like suffer too much because I don't know why a faithful God is calling on you, you know, to come back, to return to him, to trust in him, to worship him in truth and in spirit and you refuse. <laughs> it might seem that way, but guess what? That is how it seems with us also. That is how God is constantly calling us calling us come let me make it easy for you carry me in your plan come just depend on me i'm going to make it easy for you just trust in me 
just be with me, abide in me, obey me, keep my rules, you know my nature, live out my nature in you. But we say no. Of course, we might not physically say it, you know, we might not blatantly say it, but by our lifestyles, because the messages are all over everywhere. We still have prophets in this generation. We have so many warnings, so many messages from God about calling us to repent, calling us to be saved. But most times, we choose to be like the people of Jerusalem in the book of Isaiah and be like, no, God, please, we like to suffer. <laughs> I pray for the grace in us all that we will never turn deaf ears to the warning, we will never turn deaf ears to the calling of God, for the grace to abide with him, for the grace to be able to acknowledge him, for the grace, you know, to call on him at every point in time, for the grace for us to always have him first in mind, in whatever decision, in whatever actions, for us to always consider him first, for us to always prioritize him first in our lives. I pray for that grace upon me and upon everyone watching this video in the name of Jesus. Amen. In chapter 32, we see another message, another prophecy about the coming of Jesus Christ. Because, see, Jesus Christ is the only king that can rule with justice and righteousness. Yes, man. <laughs> if you put your trust in any man king, in any man president, see, <laughs> they'll shame you. So Jesus Christ is the only king that can rule with integrity. And we see this prophecy about him in Isaiah chapter 32, where the Lord gives Isaiah this message. Someday there will be a king who rules with integrity, and national leaders who govern with justice. Each of them will be like a shelter from the wind and a place to hide from storms. They will be like streams flowing in a desert, like the shadow of a giant rock. Their eyes and ears will be open to the needs of the people. They will not be impatient any longer, but they will act with understanding and will say what they mean. So here we see that the Lord is promising to send a king, a ruler, that would lead his people well. That would be sympathetic and empathetic towards the needs of the people. Not a ruler would be so concerned about himself and his own family. He would send someone that has the interest of everyone at heart. And everything that he does will be in line with what the Lord God wants. So this is like a subtle prophecy of the coming of Jesus Christ. Because we know that at this time, when the message came to prophet Isaiah, Jesus Christ has not yet come. So there was no greater king before David. And after David, apart from Jesus Christ. So this was like a subtle prophecy of the coming of Jesus Christ. And we can also take this to mean the second coming of Jesus Christ. So God is still sending us this message of hope and of trust, that we should trust in him. A time is coming when everything will make sense. He will send a king that has integrity. He will send a king who would listen to us, who would be understanding and would be sympathetic towards us. And that time is no longer far off. Yes, very, very soon. That time is no longer far off. The Lord goes on to condemn the women of Jerusalem because they are so complacent. They are so self-relaxed towards life. They feel like everything is, you know, it doesn't really affect them because, of course, it is their husband that goes out to farm. They just go to the field, pluck their fresh corn and their fresh everything. They are not really bothered because they are not the ones that even have to face threats from the enemy nations and all those things. So God is, you know, sending this message to them that you women who live an easy life, free from worries, listen to what I'm saying. You may be satisfied now, but this time next year, you will be in despair because there will be no grapes for you to gather. You have been living an easy life, free from worries, but now tremble in fear. So the Lord God is telling them, that they have been living an easy life and in the midst of this they even fail to acknowledge God that it is God that has made this possible for them so it's going to shake them so that they can feel the heat also you know and bring back their mind to God so this is the message that God is sending to the women of Jerusalem he goes on to make a promise of him sending his spirit towards us in verse 15 we see that but once more God will send us the spirit the wasteland will become fertile and fields will produce rich crops everywhere in the land righteousness and justice will be done because everyone will do what is right. There will be peace and security forever. God's people will be free from worries and their homes peaceful and safe. How happy everyone will be with plenty of water for the crops and safe pastures everywhere for the donkeys and the cattle. So yeah, God is promising us that he's going to give us that peaceful life, that life that we've been hoping for for very long, very long. We just need to stay steadfast, to trust him and his process and it's surely going to make everything okay. So this message to us today is a message of hope and to increase our faith and trust in God that he knows about everything, he knows about whatever we are all passing through. Just as it was with the people of Jerusalem, even in the midst of their sins, he sent punishment to them to correct them, but he wouldn't let that punishment swallow them as he would later save them and continue to protect them. So God's message is also coming to us at this time also for us to stay steadfast for us to trust in him and not to rely on our fellow humans because humans can disappoint unlike god humans power can fail humans are not supernatural they are not god so rather than trust and rely on the help and on the physical strength of a man 
Tender all your needs. Take all your needs to God and make sure that you always involve him in whatever actions, whatever decisions. Make sure that you prioritize him and he will always come true for you because he is willing to do so. And he's the one calling out to us today to always call on him, to always remember him in whatever thing we want to do in our lives, that we should always prioritize him and put him first. Thank you for joining me today's Bible study. Please let me know what you think about today's Bible study. What is the message or what would you like to share with us? Please drop it in the comment section and I'll be sure to be there to reply you with love and light. Thank you for joining me. Tomorrow's Bible study will be on Isaiah chapter 33 and chapter 34 and I would also like to see you there present because the Lord has something, something, something for us and I'll see you in tomorrow's Bible study. Bye for now.